Hello, welcome to Cadence Loop a Day, uh, where we're making a brand new loop every single day in Cadence until we launch on Steam Early Access this September. And today I'm super excited because holy shit, uh, there's a new feature we've been working on. I've been kind of talking about it the last few days, and today it's finally kind of sort of working a little bit like the way it will work in its final form. And I'm really excited about it because I think that this is really, this is going to make Cadence a tool that people can actually use to make whatever music that they want. And that's pretty fucking exciting. So uh, here it is. It's the grid editor. Right now it doesn't look like much, but as soon as you play it, it creates these sort of representations of the nodes that you're playing. And then what that means is instead of having to click back and forth between the different nodes, you can actually just come right here and assign the nodes directly in this editor. And this is a really difficult feature to try and figure out because, I mean, right now it just looks like a grid editor in every single music program out there, you know, like Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase. But because Cadence has this non-linear nature that can change, it took a lot of thinking about how, how we would make an interface to respond to that. So, for instance, when you make a loop and then you press play, it actually, you know, prints out the whole loop and you can kind of see the pattern repeating yourself. Now right now this, this is still a bit simplistic, there's a lot of uh, feedback and hints missing so you know it will show you which node you've selected, it will show you where the loops actually occurring which is a pretty big thing in Cadence because obviously if you're making music you want your loops to kind of follow a melodic structure and to be in key with you know whatever song you're hoping to to put this loop that you're making with. Um, but what's cool about this is that right now I, I have an instantly I have an overview. I can see what this track is playing and I can edit it as it's going. So So you can see how very easily starting to tweak and adjust and push the, the melody in different directions. And the way that this works is a, it's just basically intervals from the scale. Uh, right now it's one octave, uh, which you know not very exciting because we haven't actually built the elements to pan and scale this yet. But what you'll be able to see is that because these are intervals, you don't kind of have to think about which, note, which notes you're using. And if we change the key signature, All of these notes here are actually staying in the same place because they're the same interval distance. So, you know, here we have the root note, here we have the fifth, here we have the seventh. And then when we change to another scale, we're then just taking the root and the fifth and the seventh from those scales. So if I go from D, yeah, that's just transposing it for us. So we. So what that means is if you don't really understand music theory and you don't know music theory that well, you can just come here and click around and click on some nodes. But if you do kind of know your way around music, then you still have the same kind of power that you would have uh, in a more traditional application to kind of construct your melody. So one thing that's missing right now is it's still a to a fixed time, so everything's these quarter notes. Um, but that's that's something I'm going to be working over on on the next few days is actually being able to create different divisions here. And then once that's in the game, essentially this becomes a full-on, full-powered music sequencer, just like you know Pro Tools. Um, so seeing as that's not online today, today I'm just gonna. I'm going to make a simple loop and play around with some different patterns and play around with some sequencing. Let's take these out. Let's just create some intervals for ourselves. Um, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Make this a loop. 
All right, now these notes aren't showing up just because they're out of range. So right now, you know, we don't have a way to, to show all the notes at once, but I'm just going to stick to a single octave. Uh, you can see here when I, when I move this note uh, over here, it's actually changing the one at the beginning because that's part of the loop. So you have this nice way of kind of editing the loops and seeing the changes that happens to the pattern immediately. I'm just actually going to take a few notes out here, so just so you can hear the changes happening quicker. So instead of eight notes, I'm just going to go for six notes. Um, okay, that needs to be a line there. Alright, so you kind of get the idea. Um, I'm literally just poking around, choosing different notes, and some interesting things are happening. So, uh, let's take a loop of day, I'm going to create a couple more nodes, and I'm going to delete this here. So now I'm going to get a, basically a, a sort of, it's two bars, but we're kind of going double time, so I'm just going to get this one bar pattern, and it's going to be kind of like an arpeggiated sequence. Um, you know, that's just sort of intervals from the same chord playing over and over, and I'm going to just see if I can compose a little bit of a track. Thank you. 